everyone, it's Shadow Hero and welcome to a top 5 video! Kingdom Hearts 3 has been out for almost a month, which is still blowing my mind that I can even say that. Kingdom Hearts 3 has been out. That is crazy! But despite that, I have not made any video regarding this game. And I absolutely love Kingdom Hearts 3, so that needs to change. And to that end, I will be doing my top 5 favorite moments in Kingdom Hearts 3. These moments are going to be strictly story based. So even though the moment of finding out I can actually sail a ship and have a huge ocean to explore was so exciting, I will only be focusing on what was shown through cutscenes. And if it wasn't obvious, major spoiler warning. But without wasting any more time, these are my top 5 favorite moments in Kingdom Hearts 3. Starting with number 5, we have the Union Cross All Out Attack. I know I'm kind of cheating with this moment after I just said my choices will be cutscene focus, but come on, this was definitely more of a cinematic experience. After dealing with that annoying wave of darkness for like the hundredth time, we are faced with a freaking tornado of darkness. How the hell were Sora and the gang gonna beat that? Well, at this point in the game, I was starting to think that there was going to be no Union Cross connection at all. I mean, we got tiny bits of it scattered throughout the game, like Maleficent and Pete were looking for the Book of Prophecies, but it was never the main focus. But my god, what an awesome way to place Union Cross in the limelight. What's even more fascinating is they used actual players' names from the mobile game during this scene. Yeah, remember that contest a while back that was going to have some Union Cross players have their actual names appear during the credits of Kingdom Hearts 3? Because I sure didn't. Anyway, it turns out that rather than appearing during the credits, they placed not only their names, but also the union that each player chose as each attack. A pretty clever and definitely the more preferable choice. At least that's what I would say if my name was in there. I don't know, is it in there? Probably not. Regardless, this was such an amazing moment and a great way to finally get rid of these blasted enemies. Oh wait, they just appear in the next scene as a fucking darkness tsunami, making this entire moment pretty pointless. Oh well, at least it was a cool surprise. But speaking of surprises, moving on to the number 4 spot we have... Vexen switching sides? Yes, you may be shocked to see this on my list, but not as shocked as I was when this happened. Throughout the game, we were given a few hints of the possibility of another betrayal within the organization. However, there was no clear indication as to who exactly it was going to be. With little to no evidence and really only going what we know about each character from their past, maybe it was going to be... possibly... Nope! It's Vexen. Not gonna lie, when he said he wanted to atone, I had a real hard time trying to believe this man. Thought this may have been like a double agent situation. I mean, can you blame me? This is the man that created the Replica program, all for the sake of his research. Remember how he treated Riku Replica? He didn't care how he felt or what he wanted. All that mattered to him was furthering his research. That mixed with this man's voice definitely gave off some evil scientist vibes. Just listen to his laugh. <laughs> I find coursing through you there is a darkness of formidable power growing, well worth the trouble of aggravating you. All this excitement has provided me with invaluable data. What? And while he kept that same demeanor that we've known about since Chain of Memories, this man pulls a complete 180 and says, I'm tired of helping the organization, I'm joining you guys. And Vexen goes to the full extent to atone for his past actions helping to rescue his former master, recruiting them next to his side, using his own replica program for the side of good, which allows for both Roxas and Nomine's return. Like, I don't know about you, but I say Evan truly redeemed himself after this. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's gonna be someone that's gonna say, oh, I totally knew this was gonna happen. And maybe it was obvious, but I genuinely did not see this coming. And when I found out that this was not a hoax, that he was totally being legit, I was really happy. And I think it's safe to say that out of all the new allies we have going forward with Kingdom Hearts, I feel we are in good hands with Evan on our side. For the number 3 spot we have Sully manhandling Vanitas. This has to be the most badass thing I've seen a Disney character do to a villain in Kingdom Hearts. 
And I'm not just talking about any run-of-the-mill Disney villain. We are talking about Benitas, one of the most infamous villains unique to Kingdom Hearts. A being of pure darkness, the spawn of all unverse, and Xehanort's right-hand man. And Sully gave absolutely no fucks. This man snuck up to Vanitas, grabbed him like he was nothing, and chucked him like some worthless trash. Like, did that really just happen? I had to, I had to take a moment, because this really, I could not believe what I just saw. I mean, how often have you seen a Disney character do something like this to a Kingdom Hearts villain? <clears throat> I mean, I could be wrong, but other than that, no, nothing. Regardless, this moment really blew my mind, and it made me appreciate Sully so much more. If there was one person that we could have used in the final battle against Xehanort, my first choice would have definitely have been Sully. The number two spot goes to Riku Replica Sacrifice. Okay, 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 gotta calm down. We're about to hit the fields right now, but Riku Replica is definitely one of the characters to have the most awesome and yet tragic story within Kingdom Hearts. You really understand what this character felt and why he did the things he did. I mean to think that this Riku wasn't Ansem possessed Riku from the past, but rather Riku Replica prior to his defeat in Castle Oblivion. And upon his second defeat, our Riku Replica makes no hesitation and puts it upon himself to finally get rid of this darkness. And rather than use the vessel to come back and finally get the opportunity to be his own person, he sacrifices his chance for someone else. It's funny how even till the very bitter end, he still does everything he can to protect Naminé. This was the first, but certainly not the last time, I actually teared up. Riku Replica was definitely one of my favorite characters, and just thinking of the possibility of him joining Sora and the gang as a friend was an awesome idea. But no, he had no plans to even try to get a second chance at life, making his death the only casualty of the hero's side. Well, kind of. <laughs> and because of this, Riku Replica retains his tragic and yet awesome story. Now before we move on to the number one spot, I have one honorable mention and it is Sora and Kairi sharing a Paupu fruit. Of course I could not go through this entire video and not mention this moment. This is the one thing that all of us wanted to see. Since the first game, we have heard of the legend of the Paupu fruit, but we have never actually seen it in action. Nor do we even know if it even works. I mean, doesn't seem like it works, does it, Kyrie? <laughs> anyway, yeah, a Sora and Kyrie moment. Not a super romantic couple moment I'm sure a lot of people wanted to see, but it was a moment nonetheless. Not much else to say about this scene, to be honest. I mean, it was a pretty short moment, but again, a moment nonetheless. But now, for my number one favorite moment in Kingdom Hearts 3 is... Seeing Xion in her casual outfit. Oh my god, like look at that beauty. You wanna talk about the best Kingdom Hearts girl? We can have a long discussion about my girl Xion. What? Is this not my number one choice? Really? All right, all right. My real number one favorite moment, thankfully still involves Xion, and it is Roxas, Xion, and Axel's reunion. I am sure many of you saw this coming. How could I not put this moment on my list? This is the trio that I truly care about. Like Sora, Kairi, and Riku? Fuck out of here. Terra, Aqua, and Ven? <laughs> nah. This was the group that I really could not wait to see reunited. The series of events that led to this scene was amazing too. Like every bit of it just got better and better. Sora confronting Xion. Crying because he knows of what she's been through. Axel remembering his friend. Roxas coming out of nowhere. Still retaining the power to dual wield Keyblades, thank god. Fighting alongside Roxas and Xion. Kyrie being a useless sack of shit. Oh wait, I must have remembered wrong. Oh no, that, that actually happened. Anyway, this was the second time I cried and the st stupid feels, man. You, you, honestly, this is Xion's fault. Her damn cry of happiness, she's, she's the one that started the damn waterworks. And that is why this is my number one choice. These three had to be my favorite characters throughout the entire Kingdom Hearts series. 
And I'm so glad, so glad that after everything they've been through, we get to finally see them back together again. But there it is, my top 5 favorite moments of Kingdom Hearts 3. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Also leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite moment in Kingdom Hearts 3 was. Also, let me know if you would like to see a follow-up video to this. Possibly a top 5 worst parts of Kingdom Hearts 3. What? Okay, okay, calm down. It's not that serious. But th this is something I would like to do. If only to talk about one particular character's usefulness. But if you would like to see that, and if you would like to see more videos like this, please do hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. It will help me out tremendously. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will catch you all later. Peace.